Hi folks, welcome once again to the final part on this antenna build. Now I've now completed the antenna, worked out um, all of the bits and pieces that I couldn't get instantly yesterday um, and it works. I'm really chuffed. Now I did say that I would give it away um, at the end of it so before I go on and, and talk about it um, I will give this away however one stipulation you have to come and collect it. Um, now um, obviously it's a bit of a difficult time and um, what I'm prepared to do is probably meet you sort of somewhere at a park or something like that I'll put it on the ground and walk away but um, and I'm located um, sort of somewhere near um, Hampton Court sort of Staines area so if you can make it to those sort of areas um, easily without traveling huge distances drop me a line um, and then what I'll do is I'll get one of the kids or something to pick out your name from from a hat or something like that and um, then it's yours um, it was paid for by the pittance of uh, AdSense I get from my YouTube channel um, so yeah there you go it's cost me nothing just been a bit of fun and I've actually done a video making it and I hope that this will help someone that has really got a very small uh, you know location that they can't use anything else because this was a very very cheap build it was it wasn't difficult to do um, I didn't need any hugely amount of um, specialist tools or anything like that um, I just you if you know if you've got like a Roy Obi for the want of another brand um, a portable rechargeable drill and a four mil drill, drill bit that's about as specialist as you're going to get and I'm just looking at the photographs now um, and there's nothing and a pair of wire cutters maybe a screwdriver um, and an Amazon account um, and screw fix or whatever it is in your in where you live so let's have a quick look at the um, antenna itself because there it is sitting up there um, looking resplendent um, and what I'll do is if I whiz you over to the desktop there you go look at this um, and I'll let you into sort of some of the dims that um, that I, I, I needed to uh, do, do and why has it done that that's a bit weird um, sorry about this it's all gone peak tong right um, I don't know why it's done that but it doesn't really matter um, uh, let's have a red pen I think and we'll have sort of somewhere around that okay so things to just think about is that the beginning of the loop here okay tucks around goes up through the tube out the end back round again and solders to the slug tape on the inner and the um, one of the questions I was asked about this was where does the slug tape go because I didn't take this apart the slug tape goes all the way down to the inside there on the inner tube and that inner tube is insulated by the, this plastic and there's also some velcro strip in there which it just provides like a slidey surface for the whole thing to rotate um little point to um to note is that um the tiniest of, of movement in that capacitor is a huge change in tuning just to to be be aware of it has quite a high q it's about 20 kilohertz bandwidth on this so you're not going to be able to go very far without retuning so probably with the addition of a little bit of a tuner um, your radio tuner would certainly tune it um, that would actually help um, just a little bit just to nudge it like I said before this is not going to be a massive performer um, this is definitely a compromise antenna which will get you on the air end of um, it is small and it does look really fantastic I think so let's go back to the photographs now this one um, so we've we done this one so oh yeah well, let's just talk about that one so this is the other end of the wire which is rolling around the back there and then comes around and is just soldered onto this front front face and that terminates the the loop um, part completely so you've got the the beginning of the, the um, inductor loop and then the end okay and they're, they're terminated with this uh, this capacitor so let's talk about this one um now this one's more important 
um, a little bit. So, um, so let's just get that on there. Let's draw a little thing on it. This one was slightly more difficult in that um, I needed to calculate this inner. Um, now, what I did was I cut this wire here. This is the, the driven sort of inductor loop at 14, okay, 5, 0. Now, it needs to be technically 14 to 20. So what I did was I actually marked out the 14, 20, roughly where it was, fixed one end, okay, and then made this so it was even all the way through. Um, so this was equidistant on these edges and then folded it back until it roughly lined up this end bit with the 1420. Um, I then just turned it back on itself, cut the, the excess wire off, and then just um, put it in this chocolate block. Here is a chocolate block. Okay, then I've actually split a piece of coax, um, tied it to the, uh, the tube in, and then fed the, um, this inner loop with um, the shield, which I soldered a wire onto out to the um, chocolate block and then the inner went to the chocolate block and that gave me my uh, termination at that end down the other end of this wire which goes down here um, is a PL259 now this loop will tune at about one to five I've got it down to at seven one three zero that's what I've got it at at the moment um, I went for that because it was sort of um, 20 kilohertz. It kind of helped around that where voice is. I'm, I'm, I listen to the voice more than anything. Um, here, this is just a bit of spare 25 um, mil tube, which I've just drilled a hole and put a nut and bolt through. So it's uh, easy to stand up. Um, I've tried to keep everything simple. Um, and yeah, so I tried to keep everything as simple as possible um, with this. I will um, try and get as much detail as I can into the description um, down below and I've already put links in in the other video where you can get all this stuff. Um, I would like to know a little bit more about this loop because I'm kind of getting the impression that this is quite an old design um, and it kind of goes back to sort of like World War Two and possibly um, you know, I don't, I don't know, um, but the, the, it would appear that it kind of comes from German origin, and I wonder what it was used for. Um, they often say it was, it was direction finding um, stuff. Um, it was often on a motorcycle or some kind of backpack. Um, I've also seen it in, um, in U.S. military um, guises. Um, with what they used to call a spam, uh, spam tin radio or a spam can radio. Again, I'm not a military radio sort of person, um, but I would love to know just a little bit about it. So if you know, um, then, then do let me know. Like I said earlier on in this video, I am going to give this antenna away. Please put something in the comments, say that you want it. Um, just say, yeah, I'll, you know, Gaz, if it's available, I'll, I'll take it. I'll get my... Um, uh, my nephews and nieces to maybe choose some you know a name from the from the list and um yeah we'll just uh, we'll go from there or something i don't know how i'm going to do it to be honest there must be some random way of picking one name but please be aware that uh, you know you need to be able to travel to say hampton court or stains or something like that and uh, i'll quite happily meet you in a in an open space and i'll just put it on the floor and, and back away with gloves or something i don't know um that's it. Um, I will put as much as I can on this um, on the in the description. I will show you it being tuned and stuff on a following video, maybe being used. Um, and um, it's also that time of month with uh, magazines, so um, I might do another one of those. So thanks for watching. See you next time, and uh, I hope that you build this, um, especially if you've got no other options. Um, this is a really amazing aerial it is absolutely tiny um just amazing um another quick look for you um there you go put it back there there it is fits in uh in in a bedroom um i wouldn't want to stand around it while it's transmitting mind but um it does actually seem to seem to work happy days
Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.